Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are installing Arc Linux onto Hyper-V. First, let me show you how to actually get Hyper-V in case you don't have it. All you need is features. Yes, this one. Turn Windows feature on and off. This is what you need. Just open it up. And in here, you'll see an option called Hyper-V. And you don't have to open it up or do anything. Just make sure this is checked. Your PC will ask you to give it a restart or quick reboot. It should be fine. And you will have Hyper-V on here. So just make sure you do that and you'll have Hyper-V. What do you do after you have Hyper-V? After you have it, you just open up your task manager or whatever you have. And just find Hyper-V manager. So this will open up this window right here. And yes, after all this year, they couldn't make it look nice. Anyway, so when you have this open, make sure you have the ISO downloaded. So if you're watching this video, I can assume you have the ISO on you. Uh, if you ha don't have it, it's really easy to get. Just open up a browser. There we go. So just open up a browser. In here, just search for Arc Linux. You can just type in download and you'll get to the mirror right here. And in here, there are torrents. There are VM images. And yeah, in case if you are in case you are wondering if you can download VM images, it's a bit of a process. Just let me know in the comments if you want me to do it. It's a bit of a hassle. But just scroll down a bit and you should have all the server you need to download your Arc Linux ISO. And all of them will have the same thing. So whichever country you are on, just click on a server and then just uh, go for the top one. If you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, after you have this downloaded, now I do have an Arc ISO downloaded. So I won't download ISO. I already have way too many so <laughs> i'll just show you how it works uh, so after you have the iso just go to new and then go to virtual machine and in here you'll get a menu like this and just go to next and specify the name and location so uh, i want to keep at the default location and the name will be i'll just call it arc just get creative with your name and after the name is done you can store it in a different location if you want you can just check this and then hit browse and just put it wherever you want to but i'll just keep it at the default location it's fine then we have generations now if you don't know what these generations mean it's basically how your virtual machine handles your system so generation one is basically your generic uh, virtual machine where it will not handle ufi security tpm so you won't get much of that and as you can see it supports both 32 bit and 64 bit so if you have a system that uses 34 bit sorry if you if you have a system that will use 32 bit this is the way to go but since we're using arc it's a fairly it's not a fairly it is a modern system we'll go with generation 2 so it can use your systems uf uefi and your security settings and <laughs> it will give you way better performance so just go with generation 2 then we have assigned memory which is basically how much ram we want to give it for arc 4 gigabytes is fine but i do like to give it 8 uh, just because i have have that much i have way too much ram so 8192 that should be 8 gigabytes and as you can see it has dynamic memory you can turn this off if you don't want your memory to fluctuate but uh, i do i will just keep it on for now make sure to turn it off if you don't want your memory to be dynamically allocated and you want a static memory so i'll just go with this then we have configuring network I'll just go with default switch. There's not much to configure here for me at least. Then we have hard drives. So we will create a virtual disk. And if you are a long time Hyper-V user and you have hard disks onto your system, on your system, you can use those as well. And you can actually uh, leave it as is uh, in case you don't want to add a virtual disk right now. But we will add it. We'll specify the size. Mm, I'll just go with 40 gigabytes since I won't be actively using this. So it should be fine. We have next installation options. Uh, make sure to select install an operating system for a bootable image. So this option right here because we want to install it an ISO right now. And you can also install from a network based installation. So basically, I will be is used for uh, network VMs. So that's something. If you want to do that, we can go there. But for now, again, we'll go the simpler route. And as you can see, I do have way too much iso i'll go with this one it is a bit earlier so it's in january so it may seem a bit different but don't worry about it the way i'm installing it it shouldn't matter too much then we can go next it will give us a summary we can click finish and don't just turn it on right now we have a bit of configuring to do the first step is going to settings and then in here you can see boot from dvd drive and then you have the network adapter in middle make sure to move this down yes make sure to move it down to 
through the bottom because this causes issues whenever we're trying to boot up the system. Make sure to put it at the bottom since we are not doing network boot at all. Then we have security. Turn off secure boot. We don't need secure boot because if you have secure boot enabled, it will not boot at all. Since we chose generation 2, it will actually use security settings for our from our system itself. So just make sure turn turn off secure boot. Then we have memory. Again, we have everything configured. If you don't want dynamic memory, it's still an option to turn it off entirely and i think i'll just change maximum ram to 16 gigabytes i forgot how much is 16 gigabytes so i'll just go to with 16,000. it should be fine then we have processors so number of virtual processors now this can be really complicated if you get into it i won't again i would go too deep in depth with this now we'll just give it six cores as this then as for hard drive again not much to do here the drive just leave it as is we will remove this later so that should be good network adapter is fine now with that we should be good to go now we just have to click connect and then start let me just full screen it yes it is booting from our system so we'll just wait for it to boot up then we can continue on with installing arc now there are multiple ways you can install arc uh, arc is uh, like the simple script way it's totally fine however you pick to go with it now for this one i'll go with the install script and i have a few notes in here that you should keep in mind i do not recommend you using arc install if you are using linux for a while i do recommend you go with the manual installation route it will take a bit but it will be hopefully bug free so it should be good but the arc installation tends to have a bit of an issue so let's go from the top go with mirrors again i'll just skip through everything this configuration just do this then that's a bootloader so here's something you'll notice in the bootloader you can see there are a bunch of options and it has system deboot that means we are actually using our uefi system so i'll just keep it at system d if you, i do prefer grub but for this i'll go with system d then we have hostname root password just give it a password username super user yes confirm and exit profile type mm, in here i'll just i think i'll go with the minimalist no i'll go with the desktop yeah uh, in here i had an issue with dpin for some reason i don't know why it kind of destroyed it didn't work so i won't go with that i'll go with kde then we have uh, everything is good you can go with audio pipe kernel that's fine if our configuration just copy from my so now does it work yeah it's working now hmm, maybe they fix it oh well then we have times like just configure everything then hit install and it should start installing and i'll see you after this is done there is a bit more we need to do so just wait a bit so that should be about it well that should be about it for the installation now we can get into the ch root of the system <coughs> if we so choose mm, but for now i won't get into it we'll just leave it at that the installation is complete so to speak now all we have to do is before rebooting there is a little thing we have to do that is just remove the cd drive this is basically just disconnecting your cd drive so it just works well so we'll just go to dvd drive in here just click on none and then after this is done just hit apply and then do a reboot oops i did it way too fast <laughs> oh my god yeah 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 whatever anyway just make sure just, i think we have to do reboot first then we have to do this but don't worry just hit it done i think we can just do a turn off and then if we do start it should work just fine and also again make sure the firmware the hard drive is on top if we hit start there we go and it should start and stop oh my god let me just close this then turn off connect hit start enter uh, yeah there we go i think i pressed something weird when i did that so that kind of got messed up there we go we can just go through this finish we'll go to display configure display configuration and then let's just make our full resolution apply and there you go color of course apply so there you go that's basically how you install arc linux onto hyper nan now there are a bit configuration you have to do on your own just configure it however you like and however you want to use it so i'll just close this just shut it down and we should be good to go down there you go that's it hmm. 